Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for all the incredible support that you gave me on the single responsibility principle video. It really encouraged me and made me want to get the second solid principle out as quickly as I could. So in today's video, we're going to be covering the open closed principle, which is the O portion of the solid design principles. And in my opinion, one of, if not the hardest of the solid design principles to understand just by reading the definition. But in this video, I'm going to give you the perfect example, which is going to make the open closed principle incredibly easy to understand. So let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Now to get started, I'm going to read you the Wikipedia definition of the open closed principle, which is that software entities, classes, modules, functions, etc., should be open for extension, but closed for modification. And if you're like me, that definition sucks and doesn't explain at all what the open closed principle does. It's saying that something needs to be open and closed at the same time. It's really confusing in my opinion. So instead, I figured it's best to just start with a code example to show you the open closed principle in action by starting with an example that does not use the open closed principle. As we have over here, we have a function called print quiz, which takes an array of questions. It loops through each one of those questions and each one of those questions has the description, which it prints out which is over here is going to be our name. If we just save this, you can see it's, this video is useful. What is your favorite language? It's essentially the question. And then it checks the type. And depending on what type of the question is, it prints out different options inside of here. And as you can see down here, we have our different questions with our different types, as well as their options. And then we're calling print quiz at the very bottom. And if you're unfamiliar with a switch statement, which we have here, it's essentially just like a big if statement where it's saying if the question type is Boolean, then do everything in here. If the question type is multiple choice, then do everything in here. And if it's text, do everything in here. You don't really need to know what a switch statement is, but many times when you see a switch statement, it's actually because there is a violation to the open closed principle. And as you can see, this code actually works just fine. It prints out our quiz perfectly fine, exactly how we want it to be printed. but what happens if later on we want to add a new option or a new question type to our quiz that we want to print out? We don't want just Booleans and multiple choice and text. We want to add in the ability for users to be able to check for values across a range. Well, the first thing that we need to do is actually add that new question. So we can just come in here and we can say that the type is going to be range, for example, and this is going to have a minimum and a maximum value that it allows you to input. And for the description, we can just say something like, what is the speed limit in your city? There we go. And now if we save that, you can see it's printing out the description, but obviously no options are being printed. And that's because we have to change this giant case statement. We need to add another case. And this new case is going to be for the type of range. And we want to just print out here, minimum and maximum. Now if we save that, you can see over here we have our minimum and maximum being printed out for that question and our new range value was properly added and our ability to print the quiz now works again. But we violated the open closed principle and that's because of this print quiz button. What happens is when we change something out here, we're changing our type, we're adding a new type of question. We have to actually go into our print quiz and change it. This is the part where it's saying that this should be closed. We don't want it to be open. So we need to have this closed off where we can't make changes to it. So if we're changing the code outside, we should never change the code inside. This print quiz should just automatically work if we add a new quiz type without us having to come in here and change it. That's what the closed portion of the open closed principle is all about. The open portion is essentially saying that we have the ability to add new things. So we have the ability to add a new range type, for example, without having to make any changes. We can come out here, make a new type of range, and this print quiz is just going to automatically know what to do with that range type that we just created. So the open portion says that we have the ability to create new types of things and allow those things to work automatically without having to make changes, which is the closed portion of the open closed principle. 
And it may seem really difficult. Like how in the world are we going to make it so this automatically works? We have to put this code in somewhere. And that's where we idea of breaking this print quiz out into smaller individual components where print quiz doesn't actually need to know about the internals. As you can see here, we have the switch statement with this type variable. A lot of times when you have a switch statement or you have a bunch of if statements like if this or if this or if this or if this, almost always it's a violation of the open closed principle. What we need to do instead is break this out into individual classes. So we want a Boolean class. We want a multiple choice class, a text class, a range class, and those classes are going to handle the printing inside of them. And then inside of our print quiz function, what we do is we just call that print function. And then when we add a new type, we just make a new class and we make that type know how to print itself. And this print quiz is just going to work just as before. So let me swap over to what that's going to look like. So I just finished swapping over all of the code to be using the open closed principle. And as you can see, we now have classes. We have a Boolean question, which prints out our Booleans. We have a multiple choice question for printing out multiple choice. Same with text, same with range. And now the really brilliant part is our print quiz function is so small now. All it does is print out our question choice, which is a function each one of our classes has. Then our list of questions is just new versions of those classes. It's super simple and super straightforward. Essentially, what we've done is we've broken out this massive switch statement of logic into individual classes that know exactly what to do with their type. Even multiple choice here, you can see it takes an extra parameter for options and then it prints those out just like it needs to. And the reason this is so much better is that when we, for example, make that new range type, let's remove this for now. And let's say, okay, we want to make a new range question. All we do is say new range question. And as you remember, this is just what is the speed limit in your city? just like that. And now we can just create that class. So we're going to have range question as our class. It's going to have a simple constructor, which takes in, whoops, a description. And inside of here, we're just going to set the description for that class. So we'll say description is equal to description. And then we just make sure we call print question choices. So we'll copy that down. And this just says minimum. And of course, maximum. Whoops, if I can spell properly, just like that. And there we go. We never had to touch print quiz. This was closed. We never had to touch it, but it was open to be extended because we were able to make this new range question class, which made our print question or our print quiz actually do more things. It extended it. It was able to do more things by printing out this range question, but we never had to open it up and actually make changes. It was closed to changes and open for extensibility. And that really helps kind of solidify that confusing definition where things can be open and closed at the same time. Essentially, it allows you to make modifications to the code without actually modifying the code that is being extended. Really, the open close principle at its root is saying that what you want to do is instead of changing code, you want to create new code. And that new code is going to work with your old code in order to do things like printing out these new types of questions. Now, it's something that, in my opinion, you shouldn't always follow. I think it's great to follow it when you can, but taking it to the extreme of never modifying your code and always making new code is just a little bit too much, in my opinion. But when you see those big switch statements, those big if statements, always realize that you're almost always violating the open close principle, and you should refactor that code to use, for example, classes or functions or modules, something that breaks out that logic into individual classes or functions that have the logic in them. And then that crazy switch statement can be broken down into one single function call. And this code right here is so much easier to follow because I promise you this old code that we have here, you know how easy it is to forget to add in this new case for the range when you create the range question. I know it's really, really easy to do because I've written code that looks like this before, made some changes, added some new things, and I forgot to add the case statement here to actually properly handle it. And my code was broken. I didn't realize it. But with this system, you can't forget. You have to create the class. And in that class, you're always going to put the print question. Everything just lives in the same spot. It's almost impossible to mess up. While this system, like I said, it's so easy to make mistakes. I do it all the time when I write code like this. 
So almost always try to avoid these big confusing switch statements and use the open close principle to write this much cleaner and easier to maintain code. And that's all there is to the open close principle. It's much easier than it first sounds. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other clean code related videos linked over here and subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.